Alrighty, let's get right to it. Welcome in Mitch Richmond, six-time NBA All-Star. He's a Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. He played for the Golden State Warriors during the Run TMC year. Also played for the Kings. What's up, Mitch? How you doing, man? I'm good. How about yourself? How's we're, everything? We're doing well. I'm going to start with a tough question. Who you root okay. for? Who you rooting for tonight? <laughs> <laughs> that is that that is a tough question, uh, but. Uh, you know what? I, I just like to see a, a competitive game. Uh, I think we are we are definitely here to see what how the games went last year. They were so competitive. It was such a good start to the to the playoffs with the Kings and the Warriors playing. Um, you know what? You know, missing Monk that's a big part of their game. But the other young guys came in and played um, uh, particularly well. But I, I just see it. it's going to be an exciting series. And uh, the Kings had the Warriors last year, uh, but they just couldn't pull it off and play a 48-minute 48, 48 game. And the Warriors, with their, their leadership, uh, kind of pulled it away. But I'm looking to see a competitive game. That's about it. Mitch, I had one question I was going to ask. I hear your voice, and I, I'm scratching it, and I'm coming off the top here. So Steph okay. Curry, Dre, and Clay won their first one in the 13-14 season. It's 2024 okay. And here we are yeah. again. I don't want to say at the end, but there's a question about Clay and, you know, where he's his tenure with the Warriors. But you played this game at the highest level. Can you just put into to words the run that they've been on? Yeah, it's, it's been amazing, man. And and I, I think we, we have to, you know, kind of take your hats off to them because it was a time where we, we all talked about Winning a championship, you can't do it from jump shots. You know what I mean? Uh, long ball, a three ball, you know, you can't win at shooting threes. And and the, the Golden State Warriors really had kind of changed the, the trajectory of, of the league. You know, every team now is doing what they, they did when they started their run. Uh, the game has really kind of changed into everyone is trying to play that type of style of basketball what the Golden State Warriors have brought. Uh, even the Kings have some of that flair with them of how they try to, you know, to how to play the game. So it's been a big influence. They, um, their body of work is, is second to none. Clay is still dangerous. Uh, I think now, I think, you know, he, he still can play this game at a high level. I think he had to get out of his head uh, and get out of his way. And I think he's, he's at that, that space now where he can kind of think clear and really get back to the basics of, of how he became such a great shooter. Hall of Famer Mitch Richmond on the phone with 95-7 the game, played for the uh, Warriors, obviously played for the Kings, won a title with the Lakers, Hall of Famer uh, on that famous run TMC team. Um, let, let me ask you the one about the Warriors for a sec. If, if you look at their team yeah. this year, it's a little different because – they have two rookies in their in their top seven right now who are playing. Pajemski and Trace Jackson Davis are two rookies who are playing, and and even Jonathan Kaminga, even though he's in his third right. year, is just twenty one. You you look at what the Warriors are going up against. They have an elimination game tonight. If they win, they have an elimination game Sunday, or I'm sorry, Friday. If they win that Sunday, when when you go uh -huh. into those stretch like this with with two rookies and a really young player in your rotation. Like, what is Steve Kerr, what are his expectations for those young players, let's say, in the next three or four games that are, that are just, you know, high-stakes games? Who turn is it going to be? I mean, this is, the, this is where you want to you wanna establish yourself of being an NBA player and being someone that can really kind of bring it each and every night. Uh, I think uh, Kerr has been trying to search for that each and every game and where that's going to come from. Uh, I don't think it's too much of added pressure because I look at the league as being very young itself. You know, mm. uh, Sacramento is a very young team. Uh, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not an older league now. It's a, it's a young players team. I mean, a game, uh, all of these guys played at AAU at some point in time, cross play with one another. Uh, so just go out there, man, play free um, and believe in yourself. And uh, and I think uh, Curry is trying to find uh, that rhythm. You know, he's been searching for it all year. Who can he plug in and get that 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 consistency from from their bench? Mitch, let me ask you about young Jonathan Kaminga. I mean, he's had a breakout yeah. season. 
all the potential yeah. in the world, and he had a issue with uh, tendonitis in both knees. Went out the yeah. you know for a few games, and now he's not starting. I'm not a mind reader, right. but I'm telling my partner and the and the fans, I feel like there might be something yeah. there in regard to him mastering that new role. Can you speak to what he might be going through? Yeah, I, I think you know, you know, as a young player, you you know you you start off uh, pretty slow. You had some some spurts. And then all of a sudden, you know, you kind of crack that starting lineup, you know, had some injuries, and, and now probably what he's going through now is really confidence mm. uh, in trying to get back to um, the play of when he wasn't injured. Um, and, and, and people don't really understand, and I think young players got to understand that we all play this game uh, with nagging injuries. And it's a way that you have to get your mind ready and prepared uh, to be able to play a game uh, when the seven when seven o'clock comes, so I, I can remember I, I would be sore, um, you know, before the game. I would get in the hot tub, the steam, the sauna, the stretch. Uh, I would take another shower, take two or three showers before the game, sometimes just to get my body warm. Uh, but then when seven o'clock comes, seven thirty comes. Uh, sometimes you play your best basketball when you do have some nagging injuries because you slow yourself down a little bit and you figure that you can't be do the high flyer or you can't do all of the moves that you want to do, but you just kind of, kind of be basic and just, you know, and, 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 and get the job done. And so I think right now, you know, the, the intensity is going to uh, ram up and he got to be prepared for that because he had a, he had, he's had, has a great, had a great year. Uh, you've shown what he can do when he's in the starting lineup. So now, this is another season right now. Can we get it from him now? Uh, and I think that's what Steve Kerr is trying to get him back to the, pl the play that he has been playing this, this whole season. Mitch Richmond joining us on 95-7 The Game. He's a Hall of Famer, former King, former Golden State Warrior. I mean, whenever, whenever we have a game like this, an elimination game, um, we always talk about pressure. I'll, I'll tell you what, there's pressure on Sabonis. Uh, you know, yes. to have a big game tonight. There's pressure on Clay Thompson. You know, this could be his last game as a Warrior. There's pressure on this guy. That guy. like my question to you is, uh, and I can only ask you this: Did you feel pressure when you were going into a big game? And then, what what does pressure feel like before a game? And then, if you do feel pressure, how does it manifest itself? When you're actually playing the game, what what does it mean? What, when is it a positive? When is it a negative? <laughs> right, right. I, I think it's a lot of emotions going through it when you're getting ready for a game like this. Uh, but I think pressure is uh, it's kind of like a, a different thing that I didn't look at it as that way. Um, one thing I know when you're going up like this, everyone is nervous. You know what I mean? And I, I, I can remember being nervous at every one of my games. But when the I had a I, I, I just felt that I had a thing when the ball goes up, uh, all of that goes out the window. All of the the nervousness, all of that. I'm playing now. I'm in my zone, and now what you really kind of rely on is all of the work you did in the off season, all of the practice that you went through, all of the things when you laid down, the sacrifices that you did. So it's no pressure because. If you did the work in the off season, if you you worked on your game, uh, you know that you can do it. You have to put it together and just go by. I, I always say, if I play hard, everything is going to work itself out. And I think you, you have to look at it that way. If I go about this game playing hard, uh, uh, paying attention to detail, things are going to flow in the right direction because I'm I'm, I'm I, I am uh, giving the game. Uh, his honor. I'm giving the game his support. I'm respecting the game, and now I just got to go out and do what I've been doing all my life. Mitch, you played the game yeah. when it, the physicality was off the charts, and I loved right. it all. And all of a sudden, uh -huh. watching this year in the yeah. NBA, the refs are swallowing the whistle, and I'm telling anybody right. that'll listen, I wonder how this is going to play out and affect the outcome of, right. to, you know, games tonight and playoff series. Yes. So I'm asking the great Rich Mitchin, do you like what you're seeing, the yes. fact that the refs are swallowing the whistle? I think, I think, yeah, you have to, it has to be a balance, put it that way. We always talk about 
uh, uh, the 90s or the early 2000s basketball when it was physical or the 90s basketball when it's physical. We talk about this game where it's a lot looser than it was back then. But I think it's somewhere where you have to kind of be in between and be in the middle of both of those. Uh, to kind of get the great outcome and and the and 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 actually the 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 roar back in the, in the game because we're always talking about man the guys don't play no defense in these games you know what I mean uh, it's layups after layups or three after three and uh, I can see from the playing season uh, to now the end of season the players have definitely been more engaged this year and and I could see the shift from the All Star game to now. That the game is, you know, played with a little bit more intensity on the defensive end at times. Uh, I think, you know, they're trying things out so they can master this thing in the next couple of, couple of years so they can get the, the best brand of basketball they can at this highest level. Uh, so what I'm seeing, I love it. Um, and I think that players will adjust because they're great players. And so they will adjust. Uh, you just have to, you know, implement the rules. Uh, just what David Stern did, he had he implemented rules, and we followed those rules. And I think this is something where you want to have this game kind of continue to keep going globally, but you got to keep these guys engaged. You got to keep these guys on the floor. Uh, all that, um, you know, sitting out when you're not injured, all of that. It's a lot of things that they have to really kind of uh, balance. And, and I think they're doing a great job in this play-in season and in-season tournament has been great. Hey, real quick, and we're talking to Mitch Richmond, a Hall of Famer, NBA champion, member of Run TMC. He's also a uh, – you won a gold medal in 96. Let me let me just throw right. this at you. Uh, Steph Curry's playing the Olympics uh, this year, so mm-hmm. that means he's going to he's going to France. He's 36 years old. If, if you're a right. Warrior fan that worries about him getting rest in the offseason right. – do the Olympics? Did, did you feel the Olympics the year after the Olympics? Um, I think you. I, I, I think uh, not necessarily. Uh, I, I think because you know you're going there with a team uh, that you're trying to establish that any any given night it can be your turn in the Olympics. You just have to play your role and do your job. It's just like you're playing summer league in uh, in the off season, trying to get yourself better and prepared for the for the season. I think this is is a great opportunity. It's something that you will look back uh, when you when you're a little older and say, "Hey, man, I had an opportunity to play in two or three uh, Olympics." Um, Curry takes very good care of his body, so he knows when to get the rest and when not. Uh, and you know, just like we're talking about the physicality of the NBA game. Uh, allows him to really kind of give himself some rest during the off season. So I, I think he'll be fine. I, I know, you know, if, if he wasn't there, I think our Warrior fans would be like, well, why Steph? Didn't right. Play? You know, what I mean? so I think, you know, we, we need Steph on that team. We need to take our best players because we've already seen that the game is really kind of uh, catching up because of European play. We, we I don't know how many European players we have uh, in the NBA. Uh, but the game is really getting close, and uh, we have to have our best players out there. Mitch, thank you so thank much you. for joining us, man. Really appreciate it. Hope you're doing uh, well. Oh, man, thank you so much, and uh, appreciate it, man. It's going to be a good game, but, you know, Warriors drafted me. I always love those guys, and the Kings, you know, gave me so much love. So it's 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 so much in between, but the, but but I love both franchises, and, uh, and thanks for having me today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Mitch Richmond, Hall of Fame. 